Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today I want to walk you through a simple calibration exercise with a free piece of software called NPing, and that's part of the NMAP tool set. It's going to be an interesting little article that I think you'll find interesting, so I'm going to jump right to it. The goal is to calibrate and illustrate the possible NPing performance issues on a Windows computer. So NMAP, you'll see this in a, in a few more seconds, uh, NMAP and NPing comes in various uh, versions for different operating systems. And the problem is you're going to just generate traffic or whatever you're going to do and you're going to assume that what you sent out is exactly what comes out on the wire. I want to see if that's the case, right? So the conclusion, just to kind of spoiler alert, NPing's throughput is affected by the command syntax being used as well as Microsoft's architecture. I want to explain that as we go through it. So what did I use? I used an OptiView XG. Uh, from Netscout and I use that to record the traffic that I'm generating. Uh, I don't want to use another Windows machine because it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole exercise. I want to use an actual performance testing tool and the OptiView can accept 100 meg, 1 gig, 10 gig, no problem. So I know that it will not be, I'm going to say, um, skewed with its results. On my PC I ran iPerf3 and there's the URL up there if you want to go get it. It's a free tool. Uh, and what it's going to do is generate traffic. And what I want to use that for is to find out how fast my laptop, in this case, uh, will behave. So if it's a 100 meg link, I want to make sure I can generate at least 100 meg within my machine. This is a very, very important exercise to do, especially if you have a netbook, any kind of computer that you have, or in virtual machines especially. You want to find out how much throughput it can actually generate. So iPerf3 will report bandwidth loss and, and lots of other stuff depending on what you need it for. I only wanted it for the throughput. I used my Alienware laptop. That's this guy here. It's running Windows 8. It's got an i7 processor, 2.9 gig, 16 gigs of RAM, so it's a fairly beefy computer. And my iPerf results was 4 gig up and 4 gig down. And the reason why I did that was because if I can't get at least 100 meg within my machine, there is no way I'm going to get 100 meg outside of my machine. So you have to kind of calibrate and test your equipment as well. So NPing, again here's the URL. I'm going to put all this in the actual article so you can just click on the link and off you go. Uh, it's open source tool. You do need NPCAP on Windows. Now for the people who have Wireshark on their systems, you already have NPCAP. Uh, if you don't have Wireshark on your system or NPCAP, then you have to go get NPCAP, download it, install it. It's a very lightweight little driver and uh, not the same as WinPCAP. That's the older version of that driver from a different website. So just make sure you have NPCAP. NPing is very, whoops, NPing is very, uh, <laughs> nice. NPing is very flexible and powerful command line interface and it gives you uh, control over generating packets. And you can send TCP, UDP, ICMP, ARP. Uh, let's face it, most of the time you're going to do TCP, UDP, and for some specific security jazz, you might be playing with ARP and ICMP or ping, right? Support for multiple target hosts, so you can actually hit more than one device. You can do a broadcast, that's what we're going to do, just as, as an example. It runs on Linux, Mac, and Microsoft Windows. So there's an example of an NPing command. I didn't break out all the syntax. It's pretty obvious what some of it is, and some of it isn't as obvious. But the key ones here is the port number, because I'm generating UDP traffic. I need to pick a port number of some kind. Ideally, you want to pick a port number that's being used on the receiving station. Uh, even if it's a broadcast, you still want to make sure it's an actual relevant port number. It, it just adds a little more value to it. We've got the C parameter, and that stops after so many packets and the data length and, and this is the critical part right here so how much payload do you have and the analogy I give people is if you want to test your plumbing you don't put a teaspoon of water in it and say there's no leaks you actually need some pressure and you need some water and that's what this is going to do for you delay zero basically says send as fast as possible and that means that obviously on 100 meg you would assume that's 100 meg well it's not and then it's always important to review any tools options and verify that they either apply to your testing and that they're compatible with your operating system. So the biggest problem I see people run into with NPing is they go to the NPeg website, they see the NPeg examples, and they blindly copy paste, change an IP, and they believe that's their testing without checking out what the options actually mean. So don't do that. The lab's simple. We've got a laptop, we got an OptiView, and a 100 meg full duplex link that I've statically set between the two devices. Uh, I don't want auto detection because that may not work out and cause other issues. That's not what we're doing here. 
and I don't want to switch because the switch may affect the impact of the test, may add latency. I just don't want to include those variables in my test. I use a simple six foot Cat6 patch cable and off I went to the races. Oh yeah, and I statically coded my IPs as well. So the results, I did a UDP blast, this port 2000, a broadcast, and I used the standard syntax you saw on the previous slide. And then that gave me five megabits per second, or 7,445 packets per second. Please pay attention to that packet rate. I did not type that in. That's the most my computer can do based on this delay of zero. That's what's important. So when you say delay zero, you think delay zero, and that's going to be super fast. My laptop has a gig Ethernet port, so you figure I should surely be able to kill a 100 meg link. iPerf also backed that up with the internal tests but we find out we only get 5 meg. Why? Well, the answer is quite simple. The payload was one. One stinking little bite. That is your drop of water in your pipe. That's not a very good test. So if the test was to test throughput or test the impact of a lot of traffic hitting a device, this was not a good test, right? You want to kind of ramp it up a bit. If you want to see what that looks like on the OptiView, I basically use this uh, bits per second and then you'll also see down here it says packets per second as well. So I can find out relatively accurately, if you will, a how consistent the traffic is and then I can get some proper statistics from it. Now this is really important. You want to make sure that the traffic that you generate and that it's being received by the receiving device is fairly flat. If it's not flat, that means that either the receiving device can't handle it or the sending device cannot handle it. And in this case it's fairly flat so the Alienware is pretty well hitting whatever limit it has and the OptiView is recording its results. So then I played around with that payload. So I changed the data length from one little tiny byte to a whole bunch of bytes. Now what did I use? Well there's something out there called an RFC 2544. It's the benchmarking methodology for network interconnected devices. What that means, a lot of verbiage, is there's a standard way of testing. That's what that means. And part of that standard way, that RFC, is to use a varying packet length. And I did. I chose varying packet lengths. Now, the RFC talks about the entire length of the packet, whereas I'm just changing the payload. And, and that's, I'm going to say for the purposes of what we're doing, it's good enough, right? If I really want it to be detailed, then I would change that. I'm just changing my font size here so I can get it all in there. There you go. And that's what I did. So the default was one. That's what the syntax had in it. And that was five megabits per second or 7,800 frames per second. I ran a few tests, by the way, and I got the average. 64 bytes went up to 10 meg because now we have a little bit more water in the pipes. And that's still 7,400 frames per second. Now look at the frames per second. 7,800, 7,400, 7,000, 7,000. 76, 71, 73. So they're all 7,000 frames per second, which makes me uh, kind of understand and believe that my laptop has a limit to the amount of traffic it can send out on the wire. Again, I'm using Microsoft operating system. If I used Linux, then it would be different. If I used Windows 10, it would probably be different. This is Windows 8. So my machine, my operating system, my card, this tool, and that's the most I can get. This could also be a limitation in NPing. Right? It could be. So that's something else you need to figure out. The point of the exercise is to find out with your system and the tools you have, in this case NPing, how much can you generate. So if I wanted a lot more traffic, I would have to change the data length. So when I had 1,280 bytes in the packet, I got all the way up to 98 megabits per second with the same frame rate. There you go. So I hope that helps. If you are using uh, NPing or any other Windows based tool, um, that's what you should be doing. I also have a few other tools that I want to write articles about, so let me know if you think this is helpful and I will include some other free tools that I use that I have baselined in my lab. That's it folks, have a good day, bye for now.